Well, good morning. This is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome to part two of my short video series on the experimental mechanical shutter. So part one, we talked about kind of the origins of this device um, and its experimental nature and basically how it works, the parts. I demonstrated its operation and um, I showed you how I measured the um, exposure time of the shutter. If you'll remember, the conclusion we came up with was it essentially only has one speed, about an eighth of a second. So today's video, I want to talk about how I'm going to use this shutter practical means out in the field to take pictures. So I'm going to be using this shutter on my 8x10 box camera. That's what it's built for. And I intend on using it with Harman Direct Positive paper. Now, if you recall from one of my previous videos, I've come up with a personal exposure index or film speed, if you will, for the Harman paper of about seven, seven and a half. Um, that seems to have worked pretty good for me. Um, so because this shutter is, has a fixed shutter speed, to use this in practical terms for outdoor photography means that I'm going to have to be using this camera in a, in a shutter speed priority mode. That is to say, the shutter speed is fixed, the ISO of the paper is fixed, and the only way that I can vary the exposure is to vary the f-stop. And I'm going to show you how I've been working toward that. Okay, so the basic process that I'm going to use with this mechanical shutter on the box camera is I'm going to take my light meter, I'm going to set the film speed dial to the film speed that I've already calibrated for Harman Direct Positive Paper, which is seven, seven and a half. Then I'm going to take a reading of the scene, and then I'm, when I zero the needle, I'm going to reference the exposure time of one eighth of a second on the dial and I'm going to see what the meter recommends in terms of f-stop. And then I'm going to have to set the f-stop of that f-stop on the camera. Okay, so we know that in order to use uh, this shutter successfully out in the field, I'm going to need to vary the focal ratio. Um, so let's talk about what is focal ratio. Well, simply put, it's the ratio of the lens's focal length divided by the size of the aperture. Now, if you take a type of camera like this little Olympus Pen uh, film camera, the focal length is really the length from the distance from the lens to the film plane. And it's fairly independent of the focus setting at normal distances. But with large format cameras, like, for instance, the box camera in question, with this 250 millimeter lens attached to it, um, and when I'm focused way out at infinity, it'll be set to 250 millimeters. But if I want to focus within a few feet, a close-up of an object or something, I'm going to have to pull the camera back to focus in closer. Well, that means the focal length is now longer for the same size aperture that aperture hole that I might choose. And so that means the focal ratio on a large format camera changes based on your focus setting. So the, the question I have and the problem I, I was dealing with was how do I manage having a bunch of different apertures, uh, focal ratios I need, at the same time having uh, a variation in focus setting that affects the focal length and also having variations in light, I need to adjust for that, all with a shutter that only has one speed. And I think I figured out how to do it. I'll show you. Okay, so what I did is I looked at my camera and I measured all the focal lengths from 250 millimeters, which is um, the shortest focal length I can use with the lens, that's focused at infinity, all the way with the film back, pulled all the way back as far as it'll go, it goes up to 370 millimeters. 
So this is the complete range of focal lengths that the camera is capable of with the, the current lens on it. Then the second thing I did is I looked at all of the um, metered aperture uh, focal ratios that the meter might suggest. And I went from f7.5 up to f32, which it seems to me a pretty reasonable range of, of uh, uh, focal ratios. And so what I did was I made this chart that tells me what size aperture hole I need to use for every, every one of these combinations of focal length and focal ratio, okay? So I did this in Excel and uh, it basically, it goes from, in the extremes, it goes from 49 millimeter uh, aperture hole down to eight millimeters. Well, first of all, the lens itself is only at its widest setting is about 34 millimeters. And that setting, it is extremely um, blurry around the edges because that's the nature of a meniscus lens. And so these values out here are really unusable. That's why I blacked them out. Then if you go from 34 millimeter size aperture down to about 26 millimeter, it's usable, but they're very soft. It's more like for portraits, right? So I made these areas gray. Finally, this is the main area of aperture settings that I might be interested in using. Things will be fairly sharp, and the closer you get to the smaller settings up here, the sharper they're going to be. So what I had to do is decide I'm going to have to make an aperture plate for every one of these numbers. But what I ended up doing is just making an aperture plate for every one of the numbers that were at the f250, uh, 250 millimeter setting, the, the infinity setting. And so what I've done is I've made all those aperture plates and I've uh, marked in, highlighted in yellow, every one of those on the chart. So you see there's a few uh, combinations that I don't really have, but if you, look at, if you look at it reasonably, right? Like for instance, if I'm uh, recommended uh, F20 on my meter, and let's say um, the focal length of the camera is about 300 millimeters, it's recommending a 15 millimeter aperture. But really, there's, I've made a 14 millimeter and I've made a 16 millimeter. So there's plenty of overlap uh, and there's enough room for slop here in the process that I think I have plenty of apertures. So, so I made 11 additional aperture plates to satisfy this chart. And let me show them to you. Okay, so um, what I did was in order to have all those uh, uh, aperture stops. <laughs> I um, went ahead with the same system I'd been using before. I just added to it. So um, originally the film plates in this camera were made of masonite board. This is the 34 millimeter sized one and I had also made a 17 millimeter one that's considerably sharper. It's from, from, made from masonite and then I had uh, made a three millimeter one uh, that has actually a piece of brass with a three millimeter hole, but it's masonite also. And then later on, as I decided I needed more aperture plates, I had uh, made uh, several of them out of this uh, heavy black craft paper where the edges were reinforced with black gaffer's tape. And I use a spacer of masonite board that goes in the slot so that it prevents light leaks from coming in. So I decided when I needed to make all these 11 new aperture plates that I would go ahead and use the same paper method. So I have these 11 new plates made and um, the holes are pretty concentric. I think I, I did, I tried to do as accurate a job as I could at getting all the holes to be concentric. So it looks like a little cone in there, but I basically have 25, 23, 21, 19, 18, 16, 14, 13, 11, 10, and eight millimeters new aperture plates. Um, and so in actual practice, um, of course, what I do is I set the camera up, I compose and focus the camera first. Remember, focus affects the focal length. And then I will meter the scene, making sure my uh, light meters at ISO setting is set to the ISO of my paper I'm using. And then um, I will use reference the chart on the side of the camera. 
I will look at the focal length and I will look at the recommended focal ratio and between those two it'll tell me what size aperture, physical size aperture I need to use. And I'll pick it out from the selection I have or the closest one and I'll stick it in there, uh, set the mechanical shutter, put the film holder in, um, pull the dark slide and take the shot. And so that is basically the process for uh, how I'm going to be doing uh, pictures with this uh, shutter speed priority system of using a one speed shutter. Okay, so last week I had the opportunity to actually do a test of this process. Um, it was a day that was not entirely sunny, sunny, sunny. It was uh, kind of light clouds. But there was some uh, kind of, there was direct sun, there were shadows. It just wasn't as intense as the summer sun. But I just went out in my front courtyard and was able to get light bright enough to use um, the uh, uh, mechanical shutter and the range of apertures that I had. Um, since then, uh, we've had nothing but cloudy weather and a little snow and stuff, so I really can't test it today. But anyway, this was the picture that I had done. This was nothing extraordinary photographically. It's just the front courtyard of my house, the stucco wall, and there's a couple uh, snow shovels and brooms and whatnot, a chair. And uh, now this was running the lens at, gee, I think that was probably 17 millimeters. I don't even have the notes on it, but it, it was not nearly very sharp. There's quite a bit of glow, and kind of, but that's just because it was running almost wide open. But this is a proof of concept that um, this shutter speed priority exposure system, using my predetermined ISO speed of the paper, of Harman direct positive paper, which is about seven and a half, the way I do it, um, using the measured speed of my mechanical shutter at about an eighth of a second, Assuming those things are true, just using the light meter, going ahead with it, measuring the focal length of the camera, using the closest aperture stop to what the meter recommends, and I get good results. This, as far as exposure-wise, this is a great result. And so, yeah, this paper is fairly finicky, and it's fairly high contrast, and has a fairly narrow uh, dynamic range. It does not accept much over or under exposure tolerance, but I think with a fairly scientific and systematic method of, of exposure and getting the right aperture and everything and understanding your focal length, um, it looks like this system works and it looks like I have a usable large format box camera with a mechanical shutter um, that I can time exposures uh, fractions of a second long that would be good for things like uh, portraits maybe. Um, where you want a person, you want to capture their expression, you don't want to get them blurry and moving and stuff, which is what you would have with a multi-seconds long exposure. So this has been uh, part two of the experimental mechanical shutter project. It looks like it is a viable concept and it looks like it works. Well, thank you and have a great day.